electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities and can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other fuel. This new power for the driving of the world's machinery will be derived from the energy which operates the universe, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at an alleged interview where Nikola Tesla stated that quote-unquote, everything is a delight. This interview surfaced a few years ago with a mostly unknown origin which claimed this was a quote-unquote hidden or banned interview of Nikola Tesla. Despite of this, many believe it is fake. In this video, I'm going to be looking at this interview, analyzing the core of the philosophy and the wisdom contained in it along the data dates and facts related to Nikola Tesla in order to debunk whether this interview is real or not, and just as importantly, what the theory discussed actually suggests. This is an in-depth look at the figure of Nikola Tesla. I will offer my final verdict at the end of the video, but one thing is certain, even if the interview is fake, it contains an in-depth understanding of Tesla's core philosophy, and the wisdom contained in it is thought-provoking and aligned with what the current research, ranging from quantum physics to altered states of consciousness, is suggesting. Before I move forward, I would like to remind you that if you want to join the growing discussion on consciousness and would like to be notified on the latest scientific discoveries and theories surrounding this topic and how they connect to ancient mythologies and philosophies, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, as I'll try to upload at least one video per week as I continue with the outline. As mentioned in the previous video, this interview is going to be split into different parts, two or three parts most likely. Uh, this is the second part of this interview, Everything is the Light, allegedly uh, given by Nikola Tesla. If you haven't watched the first part, I'm going to link it somewhere in the screen right now. However, if you're just interested in this part of the interview, it's not necessary that you watch the first part, since in the introduction I explain everything that there is to do about this interview and what is the ultimate goal of this series of videos. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Alright, so in this next little snippet, it, it starts going into the, the theory of relativity. So, so journalists are complaining that you, uh, you're attacking relativity. The strange is uh, your assertion that the matter has no... I think um, some of the grammatical issues with uh, this interview come from the translation, which was from an Eastern European country. The translation in English is a little bit uh, strange. I think this is why the strange is your the, your assertion that the matter has no energy. Everything is imbued with energy. Where is it? Uh, first was energy, then matter. Now this is something that I've been going into. The whole idea that everything comes from a metaphysical field, and if you go into ancient philosophies, the matter is the flesh, and the energy is the spirit. And uh, the flesh is nothing, it's all about the spirit according to some of the ancient philosophies. So it says here, what about the birth of the universe? This is supposedly Tesla saying, matter is created from the original and eternal energy that we know as light. Now this is some, as I, I've been starting to talk about this, people are like, no, this is nonsense. You're saying everything is like that. That's woo, that's nonsense. But when you say maybe everything is made of eternal energy, well, maybe. Okay, the concept of eternal energy or energy as a whole is, is, yeah, you cannot deny it. Or when you say it's light, and then it's weird, it's whatever, because we we have we get lost in the connotation and in the semantics. If we if we think of the idea of photons, we think of, of on the idea of light. As soon as you uh, you think that is a very specific thing, that everything at the core. What are we talking about? And this is why the theory of relativity is brought upon here, because the idea of relativity is that everything is strings and it comes from vibration. But what is vibration? Is vibration energy? What is energy? Energy is translated into a electromagnetic energy. This is what I'm going to go into into the next one. It is plausible that everything in the universe can, uh, at its core, be explained by electromagnetic energy. Probably in this video, I'm just going to go into the interview, and then in the next video, I'm going to go into this. But this is what we're talking about, aka light. You, you do the whole correlation with the report that I'm talking about. Uh, are very recent so we talk internal energy okay we talk a line uh, might be the same thing this is what we're talking about it's shown and there have been a peer star the planets men and everything on earth and in the universe matter is an expression of infinite forms of light 
Same thing goes uh, again, the infinite forms of light expressing as different things. We're all made of stardust. If you Google that, if you go into the research of that, that is true. That is the correct assessment. Everything is stardust. What, is, what exactly is a stardust uh, and the origin where you, you, you go into all these um, molecules and all these things? But when you go at the core, what is everything made of? And now this idea that matter is an expression of infinite forms of light. This can be found in the apoc ap apocryphal texts. From the early Christian text, so this is why I make all this um, all this um, linking together because energy is older than it. There are four laws of creation. The first is that the source of all the baffling dark block that the mind cannot conceive or mathematics measure in that plot feed the whole universe. The second law is spreading darkness. This is another one, which is the true nature of light. This is very, very interesting. And in some, some other mythologies, there's this thing about darkness and light and darkness being the true nature of light. And you talk about the suffering and the righteousness and the whole idea of uh, the, the polarities, the, the, the law of polarity. We go back into the Kibalion, uh, the light and the dark, everything, all of this, this duality seems to have some sort of a purpose, the idea of darkness and light as well, from the inexplicable and it transform into the light. Um, the third law is the necessity of the light to become a matter of light. The fourth law is no beginning and no end. Three previous laws always take place and the creation is eternal. This keeps coming on and on again, both in scientific theories that this is not the first Big Bang and that it's going to happen again, so on and so forth. As you go with like a, it's like a spiral, like some sort of Ouroboros, which has no beginning, no end. And this comes also in reports from channelings and so on and so forth. But what I'm, uh, what I like about this theme of darkness, again, if you go into some of the research and that experiences, people talk about uh, being in this quote unquote void, in this quote unquote darkness at some point in their, their experience. They even claim it to be in many, in many, in many occasions, some so, sort of velvety, quote unquote, velvety place of darkness. This darkness is not uh, a negative experience. Some of them claim that this is a positive experience and they're just simply being in the darkness. And then there comes a spark of light, or they're awakened by some sort of light, or they find themselves somewhere else. So there's the nothing, and then there is the something, the zero and the one. Uh, if you think in binary terms. So I find all of this interesting. And as I said, if we say we go into the research uh, of the experiences, we go into the reports. It's okay, it's anecdotal evidence, but as I said, this, this, this is one of the other recurring themes. One is the light, the other is this velvety darkness that they talk about. Uh, so if you go into the scientific consensus statement for the future research of near that experience, I'm gonna, I already talked about this in this, um, in this video. I'm gonna be talking about it probably in every video because this is really, really important. It's gonna take a while for people to understand how important this is. Uh, in 2022, I'm going to link it on the screen and you can find it below. This is real research and the medical fields starting to study these reports from people who talk about this light and about this darkness and so on and so forth. Reports are in the hundreds of millions of reports. All right, so again, that goes further into the in the hostility to the theory of relativity. So uh, as, as we said, this is 1899. The theory of relativity from Einstein was in 1905, I think, first yeah, theory of 1905, and then developed between 1907 and 1915, uh, developed general relativity. Um, yeah, this is something that, you know, this is one of the main issues with this interview also because it's, it's very, it has a very peculiar literary uh, style to it, which I find rather cool. I really like it. It's, uh, it's very interesting. You can, you can tell that whoever wrote this has an idea of science, has an idea of what is broadly called quote unquote spirituality and understands what they're talking about, despite um, not being Tesla or being part of a play or something. It has some really interesting interesting things to it. So it says, remember, it is not curved space, but the human mind, which cannot comprehend infinity and eternity. If relativity has been clearly understood by its creator, he would gain immortality, even yet physically, if he is pleased. This is... 
Uh, I am part of a light and it, it is a music. The light fills my six senses. I see it, hear, feel, smell, touch and think. Thinking of it means my six sense. Particles of light are written note. All bolt of lighting can be an entire sonata. A thousand bolts of lightning is a concert for this concert. So you can if Einstein had heard these sounds, he would not create theories of relativity. These sounds are the messages uh, to the mind that life has meaning, that the universe exists in perfect harmony and it its beauty, uh, the cause and effect of creation. This music is the eternal cycle of stellar heavens again. Very, very strong. So this whole idea of immortality, I think uh, also this uh, alleged interview was placed in some sort of forum or interview or, or magazine or something dealing with immortality, which is why it is uh, written here. But now the, this idea that um, uh, in the UFO related literature, the concept of higher beings which have transcended physicality and uh, have achieved some sort of immortality is present. This is part of the literature. I'm going to be going into it. As I said, I don't know how I'm going to uh, put this in the channel because one thing that I want to do in this channel is focus strictly on the scientific research. This uh, this video that I'm doing today uh, related to Nikola Tesla's um, interview is going to go into the playlist Pragmatic Philosophy where we can look into the philosophy and then we can go into some of the other theories and I'm going to be linking some actual scientific theories for example that scientific consensus statement that's a real published research by a group of uh, by a group of people in, from different medical fields from different universities so we're tying some of this philosophy with the actual research however when it comes to the more um no, I'm going to go ahead and say crazier, more uh, far-fetched ideas, which are themes and which repeat over and over just in the literature because we have no research, we have no way to prove any of this. I'm going to find a way to introduce it in this channel. It keeps going, it keeps going saying, so you hear the music and so on and so forth, and it goes into Einstein. No, I have nothing against Mr. Einstein. He is a kind person and has done many good things, some of which will become part of the music. And it reminds me of Nietzsche. So how some people are seen dancing, but some of the other people cannot hear the music, something of that nature. I will write to him and try to explain that the ether exists and that its particles are what keep the universe in harmony and the life in eternity. And this is something that I've been talking about. The whole idea that we live in some sort of a matrix of information and everything is information, this ether, this um, potential energy that exists everywhere is a real thing. And everything is some sort of a network of quote unquote, call it consciousness, call it quantum field, call it morphic resonance, call it electromagnetic energy, electromagnetic field, call it what you want. This, 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 this ether exists. Um, so going into Einstein, the whole idea that uh, proving Einstein wrong, some some scientists, uh, the ones who won the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics just in this year, I have to repeat, this was written in 2012, so saying that Einstein was wrong in 2012 was probably really, really, really far-fetched, but in 2022, now that we have the Nobel Prize in Physics, you know, I made a video about it saying that the universe is not local. Uh, they, they proved Einstein wrong. And it, as it says here, he's a kind person. He has done many good things. It's not that Einstein absolutely was. Um, he was a scientist. He, he, he just couldn't put together the idea that the universe is not locally real that 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 that, that anything travels faster than the speed of light it would it, it would mean that the universe is not real as we think it is and i go into it in that video i'm gonna link it somewhere on the screen you can find it below um so einstein what the work of einstein just going in depth into all of this was huge for people not to fall into mistakes and to go and <laughs> Only, only, only after a hundred years, he was proven wrong because now we have the technology to look into the whole thing. So the contribution of Einstein is huge. It's, uh, it's no, it's no hidden fact that I am a huge fan of Mr. Einstein here. All right. So something that I found interesting here is, uh, it's a me please under what conditions angel adopt on the earth. As I said, this doesn't make a lot of sense. 
but this seems to be translated from an Eastern European language regarding a play. Uh, he goes on to say, I have 10 of them, keep good records, vigilant. I will document all your words, dear Mr. Tesla. So I go into something very esoteric around here. And then it says, so I enjoyed every... So I enjoyed Tesla saying, so I enjoyed every day and night. Write down, Nikola Tesla was a happy man. The full requirement is to adjust the physical assembly with a workman's body is a perfect machine. It goes to talk about food and some, some other things. Now, if you are someone who is making a literary, um, a literary work of creativity based on um, what seems to be admiration of Nikola Tesla, going further to say that he was a happy man perhaps not being in the mind of nikola tesla wouldn't that be a little bit offensive a little bit uh, pushing the envelope a little bit uh, crossing the boundary i think so so in the remote in the remote possibility that this is a real interview for nikola tesla um this makes sense that he talks about his own things about some of his own ideas uh, especially being a very introverted man, which has the opportunity to uh, explain his ideas to the world. This would make sense in a way. So going into the angel adopt on the ad, I found this um, article here. So I said all these articles are going to be below as well. I'm going to link them so you can go through them and make your own mind about things. Uh, so Tesla or adaptation of an angel, the lost interview with Nikola Tesla. I think this idea or adaptation of an angel is the name of the play if tesla in this interview was talking about something weird about angel or something and then there was the play made on to it or vice versa i'm not sure what's going on here but it's interesting in any case so this is the play tesla or adaptation of an angel all right, so here in this same article, I found that uh, there's this video about the lost interview. It's a pretty cool video. Uh, it's on YouTube. You can watch it. And the whole interview is uh, here just uh, bit by bit. I'm skipping to the most important things and just adding some of the some of the resources that I've cataloged in this outline, putting some of the research and making the connections with ancient philosophies and so on and so forth with the outer states of consciousness but if you just want the main interview and some of the um ideas of uh, of this of this author you can you can find it right here but at the beginning of this uh, there's the voice of nikola tesla or uh, the alleged voice of nikola tesla talking about this uh quote-unquote cosmic energy electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities i can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal oil gas or any other fuel. This new power for the driving of the world's machinery will be derived from the energy which operates the universe. The cosmic energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy. The cosmic energy. All right, so the cosmic energy uh, the, the, this video goes into the then into the interview, but the cosmic energy. This is what uh, Tesla is talking about. So as I said, when you think about the eccentricism of Nikola Tesla and how this interview talks about Nikola Tesla was a happy man, when you talk about his words on cosmic energy, when you think about all of these things, it, there's only two two outcomes of this. Either this has the remote possibility of being real. Or whoever wrote this made a great job putting the ideas of Tesla forward in a very interesting and stylish way. Now, a lot of people say that this um, this audio of Tesla could be fake because you know everybody says that everything is fake. But if you think about, um, and I have it right here, the history of uh, sound recording. Sound recording, it says the second wave of sound recording history was ushered in by the introduction of Western's electric integrated uh, system of electrical microphones, ele electronic signal amplifiers, and electromechanical recorders, which was adopted by major US record labels in 1925. This says here, recorded sessions for his cello concerto in 1920. Uh, 1925 45 this is a microphone so the idea that around 25 there could be uh the voice of nikola tesla nikola tesla died in 43 at 86 years old so if he the the voice here <clears throat> really sounds like a 70 year old man 
which would be the age of Tesla around the 1930s, which would be like five to 10 years after the development. And I, I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh, Wikipedia is the, the greatest source of information and so on and so forth. It's just, this is basic information. You can corroborate it online, whatever. Wikipedia is the easiest way to grab quick information like this. So this recording. Electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities. I can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other fuel. This new power for the driving of the world's machinery will be derived from the energy which operates the universe. The cosmic energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy. This voice does sound like a 70-year-old uh, man recording in a very early microphone which has a lot of bleed into it and uh, you can hear the bleed in the microphone the bleed is the noise the, the static noise that comes uh from from all the sources uh so yeah it's up to you to decide whether this is real and everything he talked about and the quotes and the written records and even this interview it's all up to you to make your mind about this all right, uh, it goes on this little article, as I said, I'm going to link it below. Electric power is everywhere, present in unlimited quantities, and can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other fuel. You have an audio of Tesla talking about this cosmic energy. The conspiracy about Nikola Tesla was about him creating an, a free source energy, unlimited energy, which is in the ether. As I said, there's a lot of literature on this, and as, as I am doing in this channel, I'm compilating all of the information and the research talking about this call it field call it quantum conscious call it whatever you want this he calls it the cosmic energy this new power trade will drive the machine will the energy which appraises the universe the cosmic energy a mind-boggling article had surfaced uh, a little while back of a lost intentionally hidden interview it would make sense that this interview is hidden you, you have when you think about a case when you think about finding the truth you have to think about the intentions behind uh falsifying or he hiding uh this thing is there a reason for it to be hidden yes what would be the, int the intention of the the author of this thing that nikola tesla was a happy man as i said if somebody had this admiration for nikola tesla going past this boundary would be a little bit um uh a little bit too much but as i said it's up to you to decide um the master of electricity nikola tesla the rumor suggests that the interview is fake but how do we prove it we cannot prove that it is fake or it isn't fake uh, we know that the interview comes from the theater play Tesla or Adaptation of an Angel, meaning Adaptation of Tesla by Stevan Pesci. Pes Pes I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly. Um, I'm not sure. A Serbian playwright, but the real question remains Did Nikola Tesla really conduct such an interview? I don't know if Nikola Tesla wisdom or spirituality. Uh, this is the argument that I'm making in this video. Even if this interview was a fake, it still holds loads of thought-provoking wisdom. It does, and I am linking the research along this wisdom, and this is part of what I do in this outline. Um, apparently, as a, this was turned into a film twice in 2001, 2014. So this this film, this adaptation of Angel thing, is out there. I might go into it, I'm not sure what the whole thing is about. Apparently, as an inspiration to Stefan Peschik, again, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing correctly, to write this play, he used a true interview given by scientist Nikola Tesla for the magazine Immortality Science. He's speaking about immortality, uh, tying with the theory of relativity of Einstein. This is another fact that he was actually very critical of Einstein's theory. So if Einstein in his 20s maybe was publishing papers and there was a scientific community and he knew about Einstein, maybe that's the way that he knew about Einstein's theory of relativity five years before it was officially published in 1905, I don't know, uh, for the magazine Immortality in his laboratory in Colorado Springs. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to link all of this and uh, you make your own mind about this. All right, so a so few post-editing notes on this whole thing of everything is a lie, this interview by Nikola Tesla. 
um, I have to say everything, the, the whole interview, the whole recording on the interview, I had already um, made it before. It is only when I'm post editing, when I'm editing the whole thing, where I start finding these little details, which have me a little bit conflicted. Uh, I had to cut a lot of parts where I am completely sure that this interview is false. Nonetheless, it's interesting and it's exalting the work of Tesla. And at this at this point, I have to say that there is the remote possibility that this interview could be real, uh, perhaps even taken from a real interview and then uh, enhanced in some way with the uh, literary creativity of Stephen Pashik, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, or, or someone who collaborated with this uh, play that I've been talking about. This is the main argument against this interview because it is a little bit different to what um, to, to the, the Tesla that we would know from the interviews around the 1930s. Um, so a few notes that I have to say about this uh, before going into the notes, I just want to say that I'm going to make a full-fledged pl playlist. On I wanted to cover so much more in this second part of the video, but there's just too much about Tesla, and I'm going to go into publications and uh, around the 1930s dealing with the whole movement on theosophy in New York and how this interview might have been into a publication uh, which is which is talked about at the end of this video this publication quote unquote immortality i found real uh, links to this publication which seemed to be an actual publication from one of these occult um groups that were forming up in the 1900s related and contemporary to the movement of theosophy which happened in the 1930s we have to remember that tesla uh died in 1943 in new york so all these movements were coming up in new york and all these publications as well so it does make sense that there was such an interview all right just hang on with me for a second so uh, according to this interview, it's coming from the from 1899. Now, the source of the interview is we don't really have a source for this interview. It's not very clear where it comes from. The whole all the things that we know is that there's this interview floating around, and it might have been part of this adaptation of an angel play by Stephen Pesic in um, from Eastern Europe around 1995. So even even if this is fake, uh, coming up with all of the uh, information from Tesla. It's not like they could Google in 1995 every single detail about Tesla. So somehow they were very intimate with Tesla. As I uh, as I mentioned in the in the interview, Tesla speaks about being happy. And throughout the interview, there are a lot of little facts about Tesla that where he's just talking about himself in, in a way that if it was forgery, if it was an exaltation of Tesla's work, it would be even offensive uh, claiming to know how Tesla felt in a way. So um, if we think about the dates, as I said, this publication was around the 1930s uh, when Tesla was talking about this cosmic energy in that alleged um, audio of Tesla. That was also or seems to be around the 1930s because the first microphones uh, started existing uh, after 1925. So it could be very, it could be fair to say that we don't know the source of this interview and this interview was actually conducted around the 1930s well long when we had radar well long when we had the theory of relativity from Einstein so all this would discard the the counter arguments for this interview saying that Einstein hadn't published the theory of relativity that we didn't have any radar so those things could go out of the window saying that this interview was from the 1930s now if we think of an old Tesla who, and I in, in the future videos, I'm going to be talking about how he talks about um, looking back on his life 
uh, he talks about some some of the things related to the place that he was living in in New York. He, he the last ten years of Tesla's life was in a in a in a hotel in New York. So there's a lot of reference dealing with that um, with those things. So it all seems to be that this interview was on the last years of Tesla uh, and kind of a very contemplative Tesla looking back at his life, looking back at certain things. Now, another thing that we have to look at, if we look at this as a case study, as some sort of uh, um, just a case that we're trying to solve, we would, we would have to look for a reason of why this interview was banned or hidden or lost is there a reason why such publication would have been banned somehow when we look at the life of tesla the final years of tesla we can see that he was going deeper into his uh, experiments into his inventions and there is uh, all the conspiracy ideas of him creating a dead ray gun or something of that nature but, but mainly the main conspiracy is that he created this free energy that was gonna was about to change the world, change industry, change economy. So there are the rumors circulating that Tesla was actually assassinated. He didn't. He was old, but he still he was still working on all all of these things. Now with the rise of Theosophy around the 1930s, um, there is a chance that as Tesla became a little bit more um, delve a little bit into the more esoteric part of his philosophies, and I do have some other publications apart from this interview where he starts going into uh, some of the ancient Sanskrit texts and talks about this quote-unquote luminiferous ether, which everything is the light, luminiferous ether, look for it, I'm going to be posting that in the future. He talks about that uh, relating to this energy that exists e everywhere in the world and is the reason for all creation. He talked about that in a different publication outside of this interview. So... Everything seems to point out that Tesla might have been delving into this more esoteric part, um, going up with the groups and the occult groups um, um, happening in New York around the 1930s. So this, there is the remote chance that this interview might have been real. My current thoughts are that it was taken from a real interview by the play writers of this quote-unquote adaptation of an angel play or something of that nature, and it was enhanced literally. So I'm going to keep building on this, as I said. This is going to be a full-fledged playlist because there's a lot to cover about this. Uh, so it's going to be on both playlists. There's a new playlist coming about Nikola Tesla, and it's going to be also on Pragmatic Philosophy. And there, was, there is also going to be a another playlist named Everything is Alive, which is going to contain these Tesla videos along with everything I've been talking about in the last few weeks with Bioluminescence, and how I'm going to tie all of this with the fact that science Scientists are proving that at the core everything is electromagnetic uh, energy, aka quote unquote light. If you're on the path of finding the truth about reality and our purpose as humans on Earth, the information that I have to share concerns you. After a lifetime of research in philosophies ranging from Buddhism to the occult, I've encountered themes and patterns along some baffling information that is beginning to be seriously studied by science. A rational divine outline, The Ghost of Jesus, is the first iteration of this project, where I analyze the message of Jesus without dogmatism, fanaticism, or religious bias. You can find my work available on Amazon on the link below. If you find this work valuable, consider subscribing, sharing, and following me on social media as it will help others in the same path to find this information. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.